Okay. So, hey, 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 this is Shelly Shell with another episode of Evolve Women's MMA. Today, I'm here with uh, female fighter Jessica Sotek. She uh, will be fighting uh, this month uh, for CES 42. Um, it's a big female super fight, and she'll be fighting our very own uh, back here, Maria Rivera, um, who's out of Framingham. So welcome, Jessica. Thanks for joining us. I'm so excited. So tell me, how did you get into mixed martial arts? Um, well, actually, I uh, do what? Um, in I joined in college um, a friend who was just doing some boxing stuff. I decided I needed to lose some weight because I was always in – High school is always real athletic and doing sports, but in college I hadn't joined anything, and so I decided to just get into boxing to do some to lose some weight. And then from there, he introduced me to my jujitsu coach, and I ended up falling in love with it. Decided I just wanted to compete just for just for fun to try it, see if I liked it, and I loved my first experience in the cage. And from there, I decided to keep going, and so that was my start. Wow! So you got in the in the cage, your first experience. No, no, like nothing beforehand. No jujitsu. No, like uh, just boxing, or you just got in the cage no. as an amateur and 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 kicked ass. <laughs> yes, ma'am. You yes. did, and you're calling me ma'am. You're so cute. You're southern. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I, I'm not used to that. I'm up here in Boston. Nobody's called me oh. ma'am. <laughs> yeah, southerner ways, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So um, I saw, you know, did you have the, the freshman, uh, what is it, the freshman 30 gain? Is that why you started? You know, like, you know, everybody who goes to college, did you go away to school and then gained weight because you're away from home? Or was um, the weight thing uh, an issue for you growing up? Or was it just kind of, you know, what was it for you? Um, everybody. Well, um, I actually joined, like, I was a walk-on for the basketball team. Mm -hmm. But then I ended up breaking my ankle in a car wreck and then from there I really wasn't having fun on the basketball team anyway so I quit after I broke my ankle and then I just gained weight which is it's stressful I did go away um, it was only two hours away from home but being that I was eating in the cafeteria the food they provided was really not very healthy and you know they, you know, you have so much stress on you as a freshman too. So yeah, I was basically the freshman 30 that I, I gained and I wasn't happy with it. So I had to change it. And then I fell in love with this sport and now I'm going pro. So I, I've gone way further than I ever expected to. So very excited. That, that's awesome. Now, is, is this your first pro fight? I thought you were four and one as a pro. No, no, no. That, that's my amateur record. Oh, so this is your first pro. Oh, this is your pro debut. Wow. Good for you. I had no idea. I thought I thought you were already a pro, but wow, that's great. So Maria, um, I think she's had, uh, maybe it was her, bro. it might, might be her, she's only had one fight. Yeah. Pro, I think. As a pro, I believe. Yeah, because I, I actually was covering it. I, I saw, um, well, Sarah Click, I've covered her for a while, and um, she uh, she ended up losing to uh, Maria. And I, I didn't get a chance to see the fight because they, it was the first one on, you know? So I I did see her a video of her. So did, have you seen her video of her as an Amy? Um, and what did you think? Like, uh, she, I think there was... Um, a fight with her and Rachel Reinheimer, uh, and I think she's you know a strong kicker. So I, uh, Maria is. So I'm I'm wondering what you thought. You know, if you have a game plan, not that you're going to reveal it now, but like um, a little, you know, what, what's your take? <laughs> um, I could definitely tell she um, did a lot of kicks. I've seen um, both of her fights, uh, the amateur fight. As far as I I know, she only had one amateur fight, and then pro fight but I know she's done a lot of taekwondo competitions and stuff like that um 
but yeah, definitely um, seeing those kicks in there, definitely mm -hmm. something I'm going to be watching for, but I've got my own game plan, and I don't think she's faced anybody like me, so that's I'm excited. Good. You sound very confident, which is good. Um, so um, did you study Muay Thai kickboxing too, or? Um, I yeah, so. I, I trained under Bill Barton for a while. He was at my gym, and then um, now I just have my coach, uh, Bob Edmonds and Dewan Pickney. But we do do we do a lot of Muay Thai, a lot of BJ Day work, so. Very good. Right there, um, some boxing. I haven't had as many. I haven't had any boxing matches, but we do work boxing and Muay Thai and all that. So, oh, cool. So that's great. So you you train? Um, do you get chance to train with any other women at your gym, or do you train mostly with guys? Um, the majority is guys. But I do have uh, a couple of teammates that are females. Um, I'm the smallest female that is in the gym. The other weights are. We have two at 135, and one who hasn't competed yet, but she only comes in here and there. But yeah, I have a couple of females that I train with, and then I try to cross train um, over in Little Rock, which is about an hour away. There's a couple of females there. Um, another female that is a pro now um, that is in my weight class as well. So it's nice to be able to kind of have a little bit of female female work to train with because it's it's so hard to find. In the, especially in in my weight class. Yeah, was it hard for you to find a fight? You you really must have put yourself out there to get a fight all the way back here, back east. Um, you know, to you know, how did they find you? How did you know? Did your coach put the word out that you were looking for a fight, or how did CES find well, you? Uh, my coach is actually, I think he's the co-main event on on the card. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So um, I was looking to go pro. I just fought um, a couple of weeks ago, um, Victoria Leonardo, and I won. And that was for um, LFA mm -hmm. in Shreveport, Louisiana. So um, I was ready to go pro. My coaches were really impressed with me. They decided I was ready. And he knew he was on this card. And they saw a status where they were looking for the fight. So he just put my name in and saw, you know, tried to see if the guy wanted me. And because he was already on the card. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's Patrick Sullivan decided, yeah, go ahead, let's get her on the card. And so I'm excited for this opportunity. I know it's a really big opportunity for you know a pro debut fight. So mm, definitely, it's a great promotion too. I've been there several times. They do a really good job. Um, in case you're wondering, you know, like they're 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 really they're good to the fighters. Um, oh. So. Um, You've been training since just since college. So how long have you been out of college? Just to give an, an idea of how long that you've been training in, in the martial arts or mixed martial arts. Um, I'd say about four years. So you've been training for four years. You've been out of, out of school for four years. I've been training about four years. I, wouldn't, I didn't start, you know, right away. I've probably mm -hmm. been in the school two, two and a half years before I even started uh, boxing and whenever I was when I first started it was more, more like in and out mm -hmm. kind of stuff because we were just training in this little church building and just you know to lose weight and then uh -huh. we, with my other coach who we were training in his garage for a while but then I got more consistent and things kind of took off from there and so yeah about four years I've been at this Very with for the last two years so so, so the big thing was a body image issue that got you into it because you couldn't, you, you weren't digging the basketball, you know. And and then too, did, have you found that um, you're kind of relying on yourself, you know? Like, I mean, you're your own team. I mean, you have a, a coach and team members when you're training at the gym, and they're all behind you when you go in to have your battle and your war. But um, you know what? Uh, what kind of uh, I get this, but I'm just, I'm, I'm doing this, I'm asking this um, for, you know, like other people who are thinking about doing this, like girls your age, women your age, that are thinking about coming up and doing this, and what are the attributes of a female fighter? What what shows 
was up with, in a little girl, I guess, you know, and, and the parents can pick it up. It's like, okay, this might be a good sport for her, you know, to, to go in and train where these options weren't offered to us when we were younger. Um, it, it, you know, what did you, I mean, what was the, that, the, the little kind of spark or not spark or what, what kind of really got you kind of, I know you, you said when you went into the cage, you were like, oh yeah, that was it. I want to do this again. And, but what was it? about like, you know, going, you know, behind the scenes and boxing, I mean, uh, you know, and, and, and training a little here and there that kind of got you into it and then you wanted more and then you discovered this side of yourself that you're like, oh my God, I'm a beast. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. Um, really, I think at first I was just, I was having so much fun. It was, you know, I did it to lose weight, but then I realized how much fun it was and that's what made it so much easier to stick with and as I kept going I started to grow so much more confidence in myself and a love for myself even besides it you know I tell people all the time you know getting in shape and whatnot is not about being skinny it's about being healthy and learning to love yourself and having confidence in who you are um, and that's definitely what I've found with MMA is I feel confident in myself. It's my place. It's just where I go to escape everything. Whenever I'm having a bad day and I go in there and I start rocking those mitts or hitting the bag or rolling around on the floor with the guys, you know, learning new moves, concentrating on something else, somehow just away from everything that was disappointing and frustrating that day gets me away from it. And when I go back, I'm able to handle everything better you know it just helps me relieve that stress um, mm -hmm. and I feel good when I go out um, knowing that I know uh, the moves I know it makes me feel a lot more confident in myself because I'm not as afraid I mean obviously I'm not going to go looking for anything but you know being a female I think we should all know all females should know some type of martial arts some type of defense because right now I feel like it's so important but yeah, it's. Um, I think it's really hard to describe what just kind of comes out in you whenever you start to learn these things and you start to enjoy it. Really, I think that's going to be something that if you just find anything that you enjoy or love, you're going to find a new confidence in yourself. So, I mean, yeah, it's just it's hard to explain what it is about MMA when people ask me. But I don't. Yeah, that's what I have. <laughs> That's so awesome. I am. Um, I, I, I noticed on your um because I didn't know much about you, so I was like you know snooping and you know stalking you, <laughs> you know looking at your Facebook page to try to find okay what's about well, what is it about this girl that makes her an MMA fighter, and what makes her her? And I noticed you post a lot of um, inspirational things for women, and one of the things that I actually reposted was um uh. A post by Allure magazine, which I thought was really interesting, and it was of Alicia the Empress Napoleon, who's a boxer, female boxer, and champ, and her doing like this commercial, this infomercial about body image and what she had to deal with when she was younger because she looked, you know, she she got this from her mom you know, her or her grandmother or whatever, you know, you know, from the waist up, you look great, but down, which you know, she's curvy, she's got, you know. Um, She's got very big, you know, big muscular thighs now, but I'm sure when she wasn't muscular, but I think she always was, but for women that aren't muscular, they have big thighs, you know, that rub together. And then they show, you know, women that are models and they're not supposed to have the thighs that rub together. And it's like such a, ugh drives me crazy because I'm like, here is this gorgeous woman and she's just talking about it like, you know, she's badass. I've always been this way. I'm going to be this way and tough if you don't like it. I love my body the way it is, and I work hard at it. And just because I'm muscular doesn't make me masculine. I'm still feminine in it. And so I just thought it was really cool that strong is the new sexy and that you posted that. But then I also noticed, I, I start to do a little digging, and I noticed um, another um, women's magazine, I think it was L did a thing with Paige Van Zant, who's an MMA fighter. You probably know who she is. And she is smashing the shit out of cakes. And, you know, what What did you, did you see that one with Van Zant? 
with Paige? I don't think so. She's kicking and beating up cakes. They have a whole bunch of cakes all around, and she's just like beating them up. She's like, there's some sort of you know great satisfaction with this. Instead of you know we're beating it up, but she's not eating it like we used to eat it. I mean, your generation maybe not noticed, but like you know eat our sorrows, we eat them away, like all this you know and. I just didn't know if you had thought of any, you know, you post all this positive stuff and I just wanted to know what your take in on women kind of coming and evolving and, and being able to have this sport. I don't know if you, maybe when you were younger, you were ever told no. I mean, your generation hasn't experienced it like mine did. You know, you couldn't play baseball because the boys did or, but I'm wondering what your experience might have been even when you were in college or pre like high school or any of that was it just all girls or did you want to play any boy sports and was told no you couldn't or did you ever feel like you couldn't do you know something because you were you know it was a gender thing right well when i was in probably about the fourth grade i wanted to be a football player a pro football player is what i chose and i remember crying to my dad because they didn't I wasn't going to be able to do that. They didn't have pro football teams for women, and if they did, nobody cared about them or this and that. And so I remember crying and being super upset about not being able to play football. I mean, now I'm this 135-pound female. I don't know if I'd really want to play football now, but um, I just think if you have a dream, you should, you should go for it. And I love that women are opening up this sport um, I know it really started with Ronda Rousey. Oh, um, it started you know, way before then, honey. <laughs> it started way before then. I know you know Ronda Rousey, and that probably what is what inspired you. But there's so many other women that paved the way for this. And right. that, I, my yeah, personal favorite is Chris Cyborg. I think yes, she's the epitome of strength and just. I really, I mean, I know there's some controversy behind her, but I, mm -hmm. I see a good heart, a good soul, and I feel like. Um, She's a great role model as far as the sport goes. Um, yeah, I just think women should go for whatever they really want to go for. Um, I'm a big, big advocate on still being a feminine, you know, female and still being what makes us special, but still being able to, you know, get in whatever it is that we want to do that we're passionate about. And I love that women are starting to join this sport and, you know, empower themselves and just. Find whatever makes you happy, you know. Do what makes you happy. That's that's my take on it. Yeah, that's an awesome take. I think you're, you know, that. I mean, I think we all feel that way. Um, I, I think, um, you know, I know it makes me happy when I go in and train. And I, I train in Muay Thai kickboxing and have done a little ground stuff over the years. And I've done a lot of uh, martial arts and stuff. And But had that struggle of, like, being told, no, you can't. And... And it, it does affect you in different ways as you grow in, into your adult life. But um, now there's so many wonderful opportunities for women um, in, in sports in general, but um, the mixed martial arts in this particular um, uh, venue of a, you know, of a, a, a male dominated thing, you know, sport or profession is now open to women, which is really, great and it gives you kind of you know this awesome opportunity to come back east here and fight and how do you see you know like i mean i i think i caught maybe a, a little video of you doing some pads or whatever and and you really want to go for the gusto here you want to take it all the way as far as possible um and you you want to get into invicta or the UFC, or maybe Strike Force. I'm not Strike Force. I'm Bellator. One of those. You know, if somebody would pick you up to fight and go for one of those belts. Right. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'm ready. I'm ready to go. I'm. I'm ready to see what this fight holds. I'm. I'm ready for a war. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. I'm always looking for that war for that person to challenge me. So I'm excited. I'm preparing. I know she's preparing, and I'm. I'm ready to see what happens. That sounds awesome. Um, so I noticed, um, I, I had also noticed on your Facebook fed, you have, do you have a dog? Oh yeah, I have two dogs. You have two dogs. Well, one of these funny things, you know, like when you're kind of like, oh, I'm trying to find something that, you know, is familiar about. Well, I used to have this, um, uh, uh, 
a golden retriever, I'm sorry, a golden retriever. And we used to put like, you know, the, the, the bones on his nose. And I saw a photograph of you, maybe it's your dog. You put, do you, and, and the way they look, their eyes, and they just look at you, please, mama, can I have that bone? <laughs> you know, like, that. And it's so hilarious, right? And, and, and I'm like, oh my God, do you, do you say, okay? And then he flips it up and catches it? He does. Mm -hmm. It's such a cute yeah. trick. So do you, yes, what's your I love it. Do what? What's your dog's name again? Um, I have a Aussie Wolf mix named uh, Seamus, and I have a Black Lab Doberman mix named Blackjack. Blackjack. So are, are they named after pirates? <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, well, <laughs> uh, with, <laughs> with um, Blackjack, I was just, I got him when I was 15, uh -huh. and me and my friends sitting around trying to figure out what to name my new puppy and that's just what we came up with and then when I got my Aussie he um me and my roommate were trying to come up with kind of like Irish sounding stuff and so we came up with Seamus and it kind of matches him a little bit because he does so many things that just make me do this but he's <laughs> a dog and I love him so much <laughs> that's awesome so I'm um, you do you live at home with your folks still and uh or are you out on your own and you know you know women in the world conquering it um i'm out on my own i do have um i do have a roommate mm -hmm. and and but, um, oops, sorry <laughs> oh, you're fine, but i've been on my own like since i went off to college i think i came home one summer and stayed home for that summer, and then after that um I had to stay in the dorms one more year, and then after that, me and my best friend actually got an apartment together when I was still in college, and from there, I have not gone home since, so um, I don't think I could handle it if I had to. I mean, I, I could definitely go back home if I had to, but I like being on my own as much as I can, and soon, hopefully, I love my roommate, but hopefully, I can get past having roommates and just kind of have my own place. That's kind of my goal. So hopefully once my career takes off as being a pro, mm -hmm. I'll have enough money to do that. Yeah. So that's the thing. It's like, how do you support yourself now while you're training? Because I, I, I'm sure if you're, if you're training as a professional fighter, your fight camp is very rigorous for a fight coming up. And how do you balance, you know, um, you know, having, <clears throat> you know, to maintain rent, two dogs <laughs> and, and, you know, utilities, all that food, you know, all that sort of stuff and, and probably paying for your training. So how do you manage all that now? Well, I work, um, I'm a caregiver for adults with disabilities. I work a 40 hour a week. Um, recently due to government issues, we're not allowed to get more overtime anymore, which mm -hmm. is really hard for me. So I'm really glad that I'm making this, change into going pro so I can start making some money off of that as well. So um yeah, I'm a caregiver and then um it's hard. It's really hard. My my training camps, I'm training two, three, four times a day sometimes, especially on days off. And one thing that I can say that is definitely helpful is um my client, he actually I've been working with him for two and a half years now. And um, he really likes to go to the gym with me. He loves being around all the fighters. He actually calls them his family because they'll come. He comes in and they're all. They don't even talk to me. They're all excited. He's there. They want to talk to him. Um, and they have a. They, he has a great time going. So that helps me be able to get some training in, even when I have him with me. And you know, my bosses are good with it because it gets him out of the house. He gets to go have some fun and do some stuff. Um, but. Yeah, that's basically how I maintain my lifestyle right now. It's it's um just working forty hours a week and then training as hard as I can and just trying to you know budget, budget, budget everything. So this extra money coming in, especially picking up sponsors, is a huge help. Sure. So are you looking for sponsors now? Like, how do you go about finding sponsors? What What's, you know, does your coach help you with that? Do you have a manager? What? How do you go about doing that? 
<clears throat> um, right now, I uh, I post on Facebook a lot. Um, I actually need to get on making. We have sponsor pages that we can put out. I haven't made my own yet. I need to make that very soon and get that out. Um, right now, my sponsors I picked up have been through um, friendships or you know people contacting me from Facebook after posting stuff. Um, uh, my coach has helped a little bit, and we also have um, a like gym secretary, sort of, I guess you could say, um, that helps with that a little bit too. So that's basically been my main way, but I really need to kind of get out more and talk to local businesses. So that's that that puts a lot on you as a fighter too. I mean, you 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 do have to. Are you finding that you have to be your own uh, to your own horn, so to speak, and um, I mean, that's going to be, a, I, I would think, a part of it. You know, when we look at how Ronda Rousey kind of made her career, she got out there and tooted her own horn, and she made herself very publicly available um, in her beginnings. And then towards the end, after she lost, of course, she, she didn't want any part of it anymore. She's got other things, I think, to do, which is fine. Um, but looking at that, uh, comparatively to maybe how some other fighters are, are doing. I mean, you, you're starting out and, you know, looking at the successful ones monetarily, this is kind of, you know, you can only do this for so long. What What's your take on it coming into this after you've observed maybe some of how some of the other um, alumni, you know, the, the, the uh, fighters that have preceded you, um, you know, how are you looking at it now approaching this as a career for yourself and being serious about it um, to, to support yourself doing this? How are you looking at it now? Um, I'm looking at it, um, I'm kind of cautious about it, but at the same time excited because I know that it can either be a really long road of uh, a really hard work a really hard road where I just have to work and work and work at it. Um, while others I've seen get in there really quickly, as far as female fighters go, I know that they want female fighters very quickly for Invicta and for the bigger shows because we're, we're new, we're what's bringing in money. So um, I don't know. I'm. I'm excited and I'm nervous because I'm not sure what to expect really. Um, there's big opportunities and then there's there's really uh, there's things you know like getting injured that mm -hmm. completely take you out of it that completely change your career path you know. But hopefully, if anything like that happened, I feel like I'm far enough. You know, if injury is depending on what the injury is, if I'm still allowed to, you know, I can coach or whatever, at least something where I can be involved and still be happy in mm -hmm. what I'm doing. Um, I don't expect to necessarily get rich off this, but I do expect to do something I love for as long as I can do it. But if I do get you know, a good steady place, I'll be happy. But I, want, I don't really expect to be some alpha superstar with all this stuff. I really want to be the simple person that I am, mm -hmm. um, no matter what. So, so that's awesome. So, um, you're coming here in I think it's two weeks now, um, and you're going to be facing Maria Rivera. And do you have anything you like to say to her? Because I'll probably be posting this beforehand. And you know, what would you want to say to her? You know, pre-fight. <laughs> Um, just that I'm excited to meet her. I'm excited to see what she brings to the table. And I hope that she's training hard because I am training super hard to um, meet her in the cage. And it's going to be a fun fight. Um, and I'm ready for a war. All right. So, oh, you know, what? one last question I have for you. How did you come up with the, how did, how did you acquire the name The Rebel? Oh, <laughs> um, really, I just have a very, um, Going in my own way, attitude, and so I like to do things very differently than most people would do them. Um, 
sometimes that's good, and sometimes I have to check myself and make sure I'm still being coachable and humble and teachable. You know, I don't ever want to get in a place where I'm not listening to what my coach has to say. Um, but I do have that very um, strong-willed attitude is basically where that name come from. Awesome. So, listeners, you got to check out CES 42. Uh, the fight is uh, March 31st at Twin Rivers Casino. This is a female super fight against, um, well, it'll be Jessica, the Rebel Sotek, uh, versus Maria Rivera. So, uh, we'll hope to see you there. And we want to thank Jessica for coming on today. And please uh, like us, share us a comment at facebook.com backslash I love WMMA.